Sherrod Richie writes, hey guys, love the show. My question is, why do you guys get excited about how much a movie makes? I notice how you guys say things like, I'm glad so-and-so movie made that much. Why? It's almost like you're happy that the Fat Cat Movie Studios made a billion more dollars, almost like you're rooting for the rich to get richer. The movie made X amount of money, but so what? You don't get anything out of it, so why care? Um, you know, this this actually is reflective of a lot of questions we get. It's like, I will often get asked questions. You know, you guys put a lot of emphasis on box office. It's not our primary emphasis. Our primary emphasis is, is a movie good or bad, but then probably secondary is box office. And people say, you know why? It's not that important. If you stop and think about it, it's very important because it's not the dollar amounts in and of themselves. It's about what does the dollar amount tell us? What does the what do those box office results mean? And it doesn't just mean fat cats in the Hollywood studios getting big checks. That's not what we're talking about. We've often said on the show that the way, the bat phone, if you will, between Batman and Commissioner Gordon, or in this case, between movie fans and studios, the one line of communication is our box office dollars. That's how movie studios listen to us. That's how they hear us. That's how they, that's how we tell them what we like, what we didn't like, what got our attention, what didn't get our attention. What kind of movies are we interested in? What kind of movies are we not interested in? They hear us through the box office. So when a movie like The Gift comes out, you know, we talked about it a little bit, bit earlier with our box office breakdown. We get excited that it made 12 million bucks, that it got that high on the boxes because it's a quality movie. We're excited to see, look at this, a low budget, well-told story movie by a brand new company was able to get enough attention from people that they wanted to go out and spend their dollars. This is us now communicating to the studios, hey, go ahead and green light more films like this because we will spend our money to go and see it. That is vital, that is key, that is important. And look, as bad as Transformers 4 might have been, the box office results were a huge megaphone yelling at the studios, we, as the movie-going audience, want Transformers movies. Whether the movie turned out good or bad, that was a clear signal to the studios, we want more Transformers movies because we're interested in the Transformers on the big screen. That's why now they're planning, Paramount is planning the entire cinematic Transformers universe. And they've got a writer's room with, with writers like Stephen DeKnight and a whole other cast of guys because the audience sent that message. So don't just look at the box office. We don't look at the box office as, oh, look who gets to roll around in money. That's not the <laughs> issue. The issue is the more subtle. What are the seven or eight messages that get communicated from film audiences to studios? And also, what is the message to us as film pundits saying, it's like, wow, we didn't think, or I thought the movie going to us was really into claymation. They would want to see an ardent film and they would want to see that. Well, the message that I got now is like, you know what? They aren't all that interested in it. They aren't jumping up and down to run out and see it. So, I mean, it's there's a lot of subtle, more nuanced messages that get sent through box office results than just what made money. Anyway, Adrian, as a producer, I mean, I'm sure, you know, the meaning of the box office holds a whole other level of meaning for you as well. But how would you respond to a, to a question like this? Well, I mean, I think you you we really covered it very comprehensively. It, it is, uh, first and foremost, the audience votes with their pocketbook. And, uh, you know, The Gift is a perfect example. And I think John hit the nail on the head. The, there's going to be more movies made like The Gift now. Uh, you know, STX is on the map in a big way. And, and that, to me, feels like the kind of movie that they, they want to continue making. And, and the only reason that's going to happen is because it came in at, you know, $12 million and it was a success opening weekend. So that's the way I think you should look at box office, you know. Uh, the other side of it is that, yes, fat cats like me get to make money and be super rich. <laughs> no, I wish. I wish. But, you know, like, for, for instance, Hitman. Hitman needs to be a hit for us to make another one. And that's how we can move on and, and make another Hitman movie is because, you know, audiences went and saw it. And, and, and so, yeah, it, it's... I, I never actually looked at the box office the way that the, the viewer, which is a very good question, by the way, but it, it just, it, it's really about the kind of movies that get made and continuing to make movies because the audiences vote with their pocketbook. Mark? Right, and as a fan, I have a lot of self-efficacy when it comes to going to see movies because I even have friends this weekend that were curious about Fantastic Four and just how bad it was, so they paid to see the gift because they want to support that movie. Then they'll sneak into Fantastic Four because they don't want to <laughs> give that movie their money. And I We think at Collider Video do not condone <laughs> or encourage the practice of sneaking into movies. That's the right play to make. No, I, but <laughs> but even like, like you look at it like, like rooting for a sports team or something like that where I want the Redskins to win the Super Bowl. If that happens, they're not going to come to my house and thank me for cheering every 
every Sunday. The Baltimore Orioles are going to win the World Series and come take me out for ice cream because I supported that team. But movies, you're right. Maybe if everybody goes to see it, something like Edge of Tomorrow would not have gotten a sequel or even talk about a sequel if fans didn't go see the movie and then tell everybody else to go see the movie because it needs to make money. You have to make money. Every studio has some sort of fat cat and they can swim around their money like Scrooge McDuck. But when you don't give them as much <laughs> money as you think they're going to have, that sends a huge signal. We're probably not going to get a Fantastic Four sequel now, at least with this incarnation. Maybe the rights go back to Marvel and Marvel can do something else with it. But because the fans spoke so loudly, it actually does make a difference. So... Keep using that megahorn. Megahorn? Keep megahorn? What's a megahorn? Megaphone. Did I say megahorn? I said megahorn. I probably said <laughs> That's it That's a too. weapon that's going to be in the new Mortal Kombat film <laughs> coming out. With Sub-Zero. <laughs> With Sub-Zero. That's his new weapon. 